Okay. Um, thanks for having me. Um, the this is a happy thing for me to do because several years ago I gave a talk to South Suburban, and it was in May of two thousand seven. And the subject was how to build and, and maintain your own website at little or no cost. So this is basically 14 years later with a, a little more information um, uh, in this topic. The subject of, uh, uh, first of all, I, I would mention this. I'm a web designer in Chicago, working providing services for small business. And my focus is on getting results from the website at a reasonable cost. I have a focus on search engine optimization, web analytics, content strategy, and user experience. And along the way, I've given presentations different places. In the last few years, I've given talks to a class at DePaul University on content management systems and a second class on building a community website where they, they take seniors and they put together a website for a client that could be a business, a nonprofit, et cetera. And a couple of years ago, I've, they have I think seven or eight teams of six or seven students. In the first year, I advised three teams on the SEO aspect of it. Last year, I advised one team who did a website in Shopify. And this year, I'm also lined up to be an advisor to those groups. Um, and in the past, I've been a part-time adjunct instructor to um, uh, DePaul University graduate and undergraduate Triton College and Purdue University in Calumet. Um, I want to take a break about halfway through this talk to, to enter, entertain questions. So um, let's see, I'm now going to share my screen. Give me one second, make sure I got this right. Okay. Okay. Okay, sure, I have my own website. The answer is it all depends. And it all depends upon what you want to do, um, what, what your philosophy is, what interests you have. There are a lot of different ways people have their own website. Uh, and here, here are just some of the reasons. Number one, you, you could create a resume or a profile of yourself simply, and that's to, to let people know who you are, what other websites you have. Another one is to promote or advocate for a specific cause, uh, share photos or content, share knowledge, expertise, sell, sell things. Some people review products and services. They post those reviews on there and they all have a link to Amazon. And when you look at, get a review some products and you see there's a link to Amazon, you know that person probably did that website to make money because they get, a, they get an affiliate uh, percentage from Amazon. You can also put up a website with a lot of information and run ads from Google AdSense to make money from that. And then another way is to create an online community. Um, some of the advantages of having your own website over social media. And, and by the way, me personally, I have not been a big fan of doing a lot of stuff with social media. I've never been uh, felt the need to publicize everything I'm doing you know, to the world. Not that I'm trying to hide something, but I just don't really care to, to share, to put, put, a, put stuff out there about what I'm up to. But a lot of people are. And um, one of the aspects of social media is it's like rented space. You have information there, but it's really controlled by Facebook or, or, or Instagram or, or LinkedIn. And um, you have to work within that. You're in there with a lot of other people. But with a personal website, you're the owner. You decide what you want. You decide how you want to show it. You control what visitors come there. You can't. You won't shut yourself down. So it has those advantages. On the downside, there's probably more work for you and probably more cost. Now, some of the considerations uh, when you're going to do this, you want to decide: um, Do you want your own domain name? Uh, that's you know you can. A lot of these services will give you a domain name like yourname.wordpress.com, but if you, if you may want to have your own name, johnsmith.com, et cetera. And a lot of these services are free, some you have to pay for. 
if you have some concerns about security or issues or what's being on there, you can limit access with a username and password. I did a website for my ninth grade uh, class uh, and we had a lot of photos a couple of years ago and people didn't want that open to anybody. So we, we did a username and password on there. And the other consideration is, are you creating a website that you want to share like with my your ninth, ninth grade class and that's it? Or are you creating a website where you want to get visitors from around the web for, for various reasons? And another aspect of it is, would you like to make money from the website? And there are a lot of ways to do that. Now, some of the privacy and security issues that come into play, telephone number, address, email address, you put that on your this website. First of all, um, I, don't, I don't like to do the telephone number on, I have a Google phone number I put on there. So if somebody calls me at that number, it sends me an email with a copy of the message. Although, People have my number anyway. I get two or three calls a day from around the country that are spam telephone calls. So I don't know, you know if it really matters. Uh, your address uh, and then your email address. Some people don't want to put their email address on the website. I don't. So I put an email address on my website that, that if I get an email sent to that address, I know that person got it from my website. Um, and then the other thing to think about is what information is already on the web about you. Maybe all this stuff is already out there and, you know, it doesn't really matter. Someone's going to find it one way or another. Now, very often you want visitors from the web to contact you. You want to sign up for a newsletter, get something in the mail, whatever. Some of the options to protect yourself so you don't compromise your, your personal email address is to create a second email address just for the website. And another thing that's helpful in a lot of cases, which people don't usually do, create a form for visitors to fill out and submit. If you want people to ask questions or submit information, um, if you have a form for them to, to fill out and submit, they, don't, they then don't get your email address. They don't see that. In addition, you don't get their email address if they don't want to give it to you. And one of the benefits of a form versus email is people will be on on your website, possibly at a school, they, they could be at the library, you know, they could be at work. And on, on that system, maybe they don't have a webmail client with their email address in it, which prevents them from getting to you. So that's one of my favorite things is to put a form on there. And another thing I'd say is try to use common sense when putting information on the web. Now, what does that mean? I had a case a few years ago, I did a discussion board for the Chicago Artists Coalition. Chicago Artists Coalition, if you haven't heard of them, it's an organization founded 30, 40 years ago. It's a service organization to help artists who are developing and struggling with information, insurance, resources, links to uh, galleries. And, uh, work, and I've been involved in the arts myself as a painter and then for different arts organizations. And I convinced them to, to have a discussion board, a, a, an online forum, where people could ask questions about different aspects of art and others could answer those. And at one point, they, every year they would have a show of Chicago artists and they had an announcement to announce the, the curator of this show who was gonna organize the whole thing. And they wanted to publish her mailing address and her phone number. So they decided to put on this online forum and in the message that said, we're happy to announce that this person is the new curator of, of this show we're coming up. Contact her, send the form into them. If you have any questions, call her. Here's her phone number. And by the way, don't call her anytime during the next three weeks because she's going to be traveling through Europe. She won't be home for another three weeks. And so um, that's not something you, you want to do is to put that on the web. So, uh, so anyway, and then the last thing I would mention, you can, you can limit some or all the content with the username and password. Okay, just a couple of definitions. I, I'm sure you all know this, but not everybody does it. Domain name is the name of the website, web address, sometimes called the URL, Uniform Resource Locator. And here's a distinction that I'd like to make, make sure it, it everybody understands. 
a web host, web hosting company and a hosted web service company. A web hosting company, and there are a lot of them now, that will um, host um, a number of websites developed with a number of different products like Dreamweaver or uh, WordPress or whatever. And you put that on their server and they supply that to the world. You, you pay a monthly fee for that. And that's a traditional web hosting company, GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostGator, et cetera, A2 Hosting. In the last few years, um, there's another type of company that showed up called a hosted web service company. And they allow you to log in, pay a fee, and build your own website with software they have called a website builder. And they will host it or run it for you. They offer only one service. That's all they do. And the advantage to using them is the ease of use of this website builder is easier than Dreamweaver or, or something else. And you don't have to maintain it or pay attention or run it. Whatever software updates they take care of, and it just runs on automatic pilot. Um, the, the biggest companies right now are doing this are Wix, Squarespace, Weebleads, and some others. Sometimes it's referred to as SAAS or software as a service. Now, as an odd turn of events, as these companies have come along and become more successful, they have taken business away from web hosting companies. So web hosting companies have responded by offering the same service under their, their banner. So you can actually do the same thing through a web hosting company. And we'll go into some of those examples later. But those are two things we're gonna talk about. Okay, a little background of what I've done. I got started in like 2000, 2001, studying web design. And the first software program I had was Adobe Page Mill, it cost $100. And after a year or two, uh, at Macromedia Dreamweaver was the number one web design program in the early 2000s. And Macromedia competed directly with Adobe. Adobe had nothing to, to match Dreamweaver, so they bought a company that made a product called GoLive. And I bought GoLive because I got a, a low cost upgrade from PageMill. Then I spent a bunch of money trying to learn it. It was really hard to learn. And I just dropped it. And eventually, I decided to spend more time on web design. So I went to Truman College, Columbia College, and I studied web design. And the primary program then was Macromedia Dreamweaver. So I bought it as $400. And later, Adobe uh, merged or, or acquired Macromedia, and they renamed it Adobe Dreamweaver. So over the years, I've used Macro, Macromedia Dreamweaver MX, CS3, and CS5 over about eight or nine years. And in 2008 or nine, I got into content management systems and I primarily worked with Drupal. And in the last couple of years, I picked up working with WordPress. I've also done a project with Shopify e-commerce hosting. So that, that's where my experience is. Now, um, there are several uh, options as, as I see it to design and build your own website. And, there, and I've broken it down into five groups. The first one is a blog service. And this is where you get one of these programs, you use it and it will, it will produce a blog for you. Uh, Google has one called blogger.com. They started in 2000, 2005 or six. Typepad was very popular back then and WordPress. And those, those three initially, just had a blog and that was it. Now WordPress, at about 2010, WordPress decided to become a web design tool as, as well. They added that, but initially they were, they were just a blog program. Second category is web design software, which earlier mentioned Dreamweaver, GoLive, um, Microsoft had front page and then that, was, that ended and was followed by expression web. The third category, are, of ways you could do it as a content management system. The, th the three big ones are WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. And what sets a content management system apart from Dreamweaver and other things, content management system is really a framework for building a website and you install it at a web hosting company and they'll have a, a, a script where you go through a, a procedure, select a few things and they'll install it for you 
then they'll give you access to it with the username and password. And you'll come up with a whole bunch of modules of things you can do to build a website with a lot of functionality and a custom database. And that, that product um, gives you a lot of capability right out of the box without, without having to program or code it. And it does something else. It allows you to generate different types of content that go into a database that you can then display on websites. So content management systems are, are really something I use primarily. Then the, the fourth category we've already talked about, the website builder at a hosted service. <clears throat> the, the, the most prominent ones, Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, WordPress.com. And I should mention one thing. Uh, well, I'll, I'll come back to that later. There's another pr program in this category called Google Sites. Google Sites got started in, in early 2000s. It was revised in 2016, and they then referred to this, the earlier version as classic Google Sites. And then there's a new one. And recently, the classic ones have been discontinued. But Google Sites is a free website builder from, from Google, absolutely free. They host it for you. And if you want to use the, the name that they give you, it's free. If you want to have your own name, there's a small fee for it. So. Um, that, that's really, I've, tr I've tried a few things. I've looked at, at people who've done that. The last one I would mention there is a, is a special case, About.me. About.me is a hosted product that allows you to set up a one-page profile of yourself with a lot of information and photos and maybe a video and links to other things. And the, the, the domain name is about.me slash your name. And it's free. And it's very well respected. It's all it does. And it's very useful in a lot of ways if you just want to put information about yourself up there. If you want your own domain name, like johnsmith.com, it costs you $3 a month. So the, the fifth category here is a website builder at a web hosting company. And I've listed three here. These are ones that I've worked with. There are others. Go to any host gator and Bluehost. Okay, so those are... Um, the, th the three or the, the five options, uh, and we'll take a closer look at them. Okay, looking back um, over 20 or 21 years, this is a, roughly the time I've been involved in this. Under, under blogs, um, you see here that um, initially TypePad, Blogger, and WordPress.com were, were the, the, the main products. And around 2010, WordPress added full website functionality to it. And today, um, I read recently that TypePad is no longer accepting new blogs that they're going to continue to support the other ones. And Blogger from Google is still available today. Now, according to this chart here, when WordPress added full web design capability, they actually became a content management system. So it kind of belongs down in this other category. And I would mention one thing. WordPress has two versions of their software. This company was started, I think, in 2003, or at least came public then, by two, two fellows from Texas. And their goal was to have a product that you could build a blog that was very good looking, very, very classy, and it was easy to use. And they got a huge, uh, a huge popularity, that was, and there was a free version that they offered which had some of their capability and they call that wordpress.com. So you go to wordpress.com, you can set up the free blog, which they host. And then for different fees, you can have your own domain name, <clears throat> you can have a few things, but it's, it's limited, okay? And a lot of people do that and that, that's fine with them. Word, the other WordPress is wordpress.org and that's a content management system which is installed on a web server at a web hosting company, it has a lot more function. And it, the, the software itself is free, but you have to pay to host it. Okay. So the first, the first uh, line here is, is, uh, is what I was talking about, just blogs. And web design software, um, Dreamweaver, front page, uh, front pages from Microsoft, followed by Expression Web. Dreamweaver is the only one that's still available today. Now, there are a number of other products that are web design 
development tools, which, which I'm not familiar with. The third category here under content management systems we've talked about already, Drupal, Joomla, and then WordPress.org joined it. Today, WordPress.org is the leader of this group. However, I will tell you this, primarily the bulk of their, their clients have smaller websites. And then, whoops, then um, the fourth category, website builders, um, these are some of the ones in here. And then Wix and Squarespace are the leaders in this category. And then the, five, the fifth category, website builders and web hosting companies, there's a whole bunch of them. And it, I don't know this for a fact, but my sense is that GoDaddy is the leader. So um, I had experience with some of these, some of these I have not had experience. So you might know more about than I do and find you know, some different, have a different view of what these things are than I do. So here is a look at, um, I'm gonna go through, this is a chart from Google Trends. Uh, Google has this, if you haven't tried it, it's really quite interesting. Go to googletrends.com. You can put in up to five or, or six uh, phrases or words, and you can select a range of dates where you wanna see what the activity has been on the web. And, and they go all the way back to January 1st of 2004. So I picked the widest range possible. And here we're looking at Blogger, TypePad, and, and WordPress over 20, you know, maybe 18 years. And you can see that, that way back in the beginning, in, in 2004, uh, Blogger was ahead of them by, by a little bit for a couple of years. And then WordPress took off and didn't stop. Uh, TypePad never quite gained that much traction. And this is a little bit confusing because when people search on WordPress, what's in this, in this category here are both blogs and full websites, where you can see that um, uh, WordPress really has been the dominant character in blogs. And today, if you want to do a blog, you know, Blogger or WordPress would be the ones you'd want to do. And here's a, here's a look at what's happened with web design software over 18 years. Go back to 2004, Dreamweaver was uh, way up there and they, they were over $400 for that product. And right below them for $100 was Microsoft front page. Now it should be noted that um, CCS.org was developed at Microsoft front page, I think in 1916, when was it 87? It was quite a while ago, uh, 25 years ago, I think. Um, but, um, and then um, front page ended and Expression Web took over. And, and now I saw that Expression Web uh, is a free product you can download. So this is a, a good chart to show you what's happened to web design software. And why did this happen? It happened because of content management systems and these website builders. Okay, here we have um, content management systems going back to 2004. Um, these are the three big ones. Um, although what's a little bit, is a bit misleading, you, if you, this, the first 10 years or eight years of this, for WordPress is really a blog. So it's really not valid. So it's a little, since WordPress is both a blog and a content management system, that this number is a little uh, misre misrepresenting. But what you see here is the, the pattern for content management systems has gone up and gone down. Now, why, why, have the, why has this gone all the way down? Really simple, website builders. <laughs> And here we have um, WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, Google Sites, and, and Weebly. And you can see WordPress is way, way ahead of everybody. Um, and, but that first 10 years really is what it was as a blog, but even at that, it's, it's down. But looking at um, Wix, uh, Weebly, um, let's see, Google Sites was in the lead for a while in the late, late uh, 2006 to 2010, and eventually Weebly, Weebly uh, caught up and passed them. 
as did Wix. And um, then um, along came Squarespace. And Squarespace is in, in the yellow there. Squarespace was higher for a while and now it's dropped down. But you can see, oddly enough, how all of these are converging uh, at a lower level. Okay. Okay, let me um, ask, let me just pause here briefly. Do we have any questions? Would you like me to stop sharing the screen for a second and entertain questions? Hi, Joe. Yeah. Uh, Steve Eisenberg from uh, Boston. Yes. Um, one, one thing that you haven't mentioned, another way to create a website would be to base it on a wiki. Yes. So that is kind of your own website, uh, but it requires uh, more maintenance on your part. But it can be a, an option. Yes. And wiki is W-I-K-I. Uh-huh. Okay. Just for those who don't know. And could you describe what a wiki is compared to web other websites? Sure, you're probably familiar with um, what's it called, the uh, wiki where Wikipedia, Wikipedia, where you get all your information. It is a, a website uh, that has been put together by people who contribute their own information. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a way to create web pages with hyperlinks, pictures, and data that connect to each other. Okay. Any other comments, questions, great thoughts? All right, thank you. Oh, what do I do now? Okay. Okay, here is um, one more chart. Um, this is, um, website builder at a uh, web host company. And I, I just arbitrarily picked three that I know. And GoDaddy is way ahead of these. I'm not surprised. Go, GoDaddy is a, a large company, a lot of money. Um, and you notice one thing about GoDaddy's website builder, it's they show up back in like 2006. You know, they, they show up way ahead of the others. And they, they had one way back then called Website Tonight. And I looked at it, it was really simple and basic. It wasn't, you know, it, it really wasn't a threat to it, web developers like myself. Like you go through life as a web developer, you're always under attack from, you know, uh, various people who want to build a website themselves or they hire a nephew or whatever. So anyway, they were around a long time ago, but they made a big step up for the last few years with, with a lot of functionality. So it's, it's quite impressive. So um, anyway. Recommendations. Um, what do I think you should do? Um, these are my recommendations. If you want to do a blog and you want just a blog, um, blogger.com is a good thing to look at. It's free. It's gotten better. It's from Google. Um, I'll show you a couple of examples of those. Uh, the other one is wordpress.com. That's a little more complicated, a little, a little more stuff to it. And then the next one is a content management system. If you get into wordpress.com and you like what you've seen, you wanna do more, you would then wanna drop into getting a content management system and load WordPress at a web hosting company will cost you four to $10 a month. And for a website builder at a hosted service, um, I've seen, I've worked with all of these. I shouldn't say that, I have not worked with Wix. I, I have um, Squarespace, came on the scene and um, has very classy designs, pretty complicated stuff uh, and can pretty dazzling. It really set a, a high bar for people, but they charge more. So they're not as, quite as popular. And what I've discovered is people, um, a lot of web designers are offering Squarespace as an option because you can build a site quickly. It's pretty, very sharp looking and it's hosted and there's a low maintenance cost for a client with, with a lower budget. Not all you know, small businesses could afford to pay somebody all the time to keep their website up to date. And so I had people come to me with, I get referrals every so often from people I work with uh, talk about how they've gotten business through their website and they talk, tell other people. 
And I like the people contact me. So I talked to this guy and he said, you got a lot of business for his company. How did you do it? Can you look at our site? And I found myself looking at Squarespace sites and finding things wrong with them. And either they did it themselves or they hired a web designer to do it and they didn't do the SEO part. So I thought I would like to offer this as an option. I still want to, but there was one drawback to Squarespace. They wouldn't give me a developer co copy. I had to pay for one, like you know, 18 or $35 a month for, for something. So I still want to offer this because it's a nice option. So that that is a really good option. The other one I'd say is website builder to hosting company is GoDaddy. Um, that's a really powerful tool. I tried it. I have a, a small thing I did for 10 minutes I can show you. So um, those are my recommendations. And then the, the final thing I said, the special recommendation is for a one page personal profile. Take a look at about.me. Um, and the, your domain name would be about.me forward slash your name. And if you don't like that name, that web, that domain name, you can pay for a web, your own domain name, uh, but it'll cost you like $3 a month. So those are my recommendations. Now, here is a look at um, the cost comparison. Um, and by the way, I know some of these, I don't know them all. So I put together this chart with taking a rough guess at where these things stand. I could be wrong. They could be better or worse than they're here. But to take a look here, I, I, a blogger across the top, it's free, it's hosted. I say the functionality is limited and it's a moderate learning curve. The WordPress.com, if you, that also a blogging tool, it's paid, but there's a free version, it's hosted, it's good functionality, it's a moderate learning curve. If you wanna step up one, use WordPress.org. The software is free. To host it, you have to pay four to $10 a month. Functionality is very good. The learning curve is a little high, is higher. Google Sites, um, if you wanna build a website with Google Sites, um, it's free, but it charges for a storage over a certain limit and it's hosted. And that's only something they've done in the last couple of years. It's good functionality and it's a moderate learning curve. So it's really, you know, so Google's got a couple of nice things in here, by the way. Usually we don't say good things about Google. And then Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, they're, they're pretty similar. Um, Wix has a free version. Um, Weebly has a free version. I, I put together a Weebly version not long after I gave this talk here. When I gave this talk in 2007, a couple of months later, I got invited to give the same talk to the Michiana PC Users Group in South Bend. Somebody from that, that organization belonged to CCS and attended South Suburban. So I went down and I gave it and I, I put together a couple of websites. One of them was Weebly. That website is still up today. <laughs> So, and the free version. Now, the one quirky thing here, Squarespace does not have a free version. So, and then about.me. And then the final one is, is GoDaddy Website Builder. They have a free version. I understand it's free forever, it's limited. So those, those are the, the um, look, look at the prices. Okay, um, let me do one other thing. Give me one second here. Um, I want to demonstrate a couple of things before we go any further. I want to demonstrate a couple of things. Here, there's, um, uh, I belong to a, um, well, I, one of my interests is art. I paint, I've been involved in painting and drawing my whole life. And I joined a, an art club called the Palette and Chisel Academy of Fine Arts in Chicago some years ago. I was a member there from 1978 to 1995. They were a, a large Victorian mansion on a double lot at 1012 North Dearborn. They, they started in 1895. They're the oldest arts organization that's been continuously in business. They have a couple hundred members. They have st studios there for, you could rent the first floor as a gallery space. They have 12 shows a year. It's realistic painting and drawing. And I was a member there. I was on the board at one time. I was treasurer, I was a president, and now I'm, I'm no longer there. But Sometime when I was there, a guy joined the club named Chris Miller. And Chris Miller was from Oak Park. He was a sculptor and, and in his spare time, in, in, the, in this new business that he runs. 
And he was very involved, had a lot of opinions, want people to listen to him. And I think starting in, um, when was it? I think 2004, he, he set up a blog or uh, right uh, uh, on um, blogger.com. And it's this old palette.blogspot.com. And he blogs on this thing. And he has initially he had a, a partner, Cobalt Blue, it's called one of those contributors, but he made he does the main thing. This guy has taken blogging to the nth degree. I mean, he doesn't stop and he hasn't stopped. And I always like to go look and see what what he's saying. Um, and he's always got an opinion and um, he puts information for show. Here's the plein air painters of Chicago 2021. This is the show. He'll put up here the, the pictures that he liked and gives you a comment about it. But he goes on down here and he's got a whole bunch of things in there, expl explanations from members, a frequent last questions, uh, current members, former members. And then he's got um, a number of links to different things. And then he's got minutes of the board. He's been tracking the board's performance, commenting on how well they're doing or how well they're not doing. And then he has his archives going back to 2006. So he's had all this stuff going way back. And if that's not enough, if this guy is working day and night on this, uh, I, like every month, something. And, you know, one of the nice things about it, when you go to read this, it's, it's uh, something substantial. But if you click on Chris Miller to see about him, he's gone beyond this. He's one, two, three, he's got a dozen other blogs that he's got. He, he has just taken off and done this thing. He goes around and he reviews art things. So this guy, this guy is my world champion for someone who has taken blogger.com way out there. Okay, the next one I wanna show you is one I check all the time. Here's an example of what you can do with a blog. I don't know this guy's name, his name is Bob. He's called the Valley Woodworker. I've been involved in learning how to make picture frames to, for my artwork. And I got into using these old steel miter boxes with 24 inch long saw. And I found this guy um, with the Valley Woodworker. He is posting all sorts of things, just like here, his latest poster is how he, he uh, had snow and here's his snow blower and whatever. And down here, he's got all sorts of things about, um, uh, about, about miter boxes and miter saws um, and commenting. And I, I've been looking at different things. I've got several of these myself. This guy has done a tremendous job on tools. Anyway, this is another way someone has taken their interest and has posted. I'm always amazed that somebody can spend all that time, that time doing this. Now, just one thing. Okay, Here's, here is a website that is done in wordpress.com and it was, it was a full website in addition to a blog. It's free, it's hosted by WordPress. And this guy, um, this guy has one of the types of miter boxes is um, by Miller's Falls. They're going way back. The, the big the two big companies were Stanley and Miller's Falls. It originally was called Langdon by the founder. And I've I've got these things. I've I've experimented with them. If if you have if you know somebody that's got an older miter box and it's broken, talk to me. I could probably fix it. So I, I wish I didn't know that much about it. But this guy is the definitive resource for the history of the Langdon miter box or the Miller's Falls. He had this site originally on Google Sites. And I was really amazed at what he could do with Google Sites. He moved it to wordpress.com because Google Sites charges a fee for uh, storage over a certain limit. I don't know what that limit is, but he moved this thing. But just look at how extensive this damn thing is. He's got all these pages here and uh, all these different, um, over in, on the right-hand side here, all these, these different um, miter boxes. And also notice, you'll see ads popping up. These are the ads that pop up to make this thing a free site. And, um, and let me just click to go to one page here. Uh, okay, here's one of his miter boxes. He shows it and you go and look at this thing and uh, oh, there's no ads on there. But anyway, this, this, is, this is one I, th I thought was, was pretty amazing. Uh, 
No, damn it. Um, Okay, here's one I found that's on Google Sites. Uh, I just was looking for another one as an example. Somebody, this is the Reynolds High School Woodshop Program. And uh, I went to click on what's happening with the Reynolds High School. And um, guess what? Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, anyway, this, this, this was somebody, somebody had a woodshop program. They wanted a free website. And, and there it is. Okay, this, this is a site that is done by uh, Thomas Rashid, and he lives in the South Suburbs, a longtime friend of mine. And uh, he, when I first met him, he had a graphic design business in River North. Then he got a master's degree and he started teaching graphic design and web design. And then he got a PhD from Northern Illinois and he's into interactive graphics. And he's done a number of things. And over the years, he's taught, he's done design, he's done research. And he had a website that encapsulated all the different things that he had done. And, and this, is, this is it. And um, here, here's Thomas and we're trying to look uh, serious here. Anyway, he's got this thing goes on forever with all these different things that he's done. Uh, and it's pr pretty impressive. Um, he had somebody build this site originally in 2000, early 2000s, and he gave he wanted me to redo it in Dreamweaver in 2006 or seven, which is a skill I had then. But it took a lot of time to get it all together, and then for him to maintain it, he had to either come to me and pay me, or he he, he tried to do it in Dreamweaver. He hated it, so I had moved him to GoDaddy, and he discovered GoDaddy's website builder, and he did this, uh, and although his his uh, experience is in graphic design and technical things. He doesn't know web design that well. He just knows he wants to do this. So he built this site by himself and is very happy with it. He can change it all the time. He can't stop singing the praises of the website builder and telling me how much better it is than Dreamweaver. And he was always told me I, I would be put out of business because Dreamweaver was too hard to use. So anyway, I did talk to him recently to, to get his permission to show this to you. And he said, yes, go ahead. And uh, he then told me that he's having trouble with search engine optimization. And he wants to know why that's so hard. So I, I may end up getting some work for him. So let's see, I have one more here. Okay, um, I got curious about the um, GoDaddy's um, website builder. So I, I have an account with GoDaddy, so I logged in and I said, I want to build a website and I want to try it out and see what it's like. And I want to, and I want to spend, I have 10 or 15 minutes. And so because I'm, I'm on my GoDaddy account and GoDaddy knows who I am, I want to build this thing. I don't want them to think this is a, a site for me personally. So that, well, I'll, I'll just say, I'm going to do a family website, you know, I'll, I'll, and I'll call the name Our Family in Wisconsin, try and throw them off. And by the way, in the interest of full disclosure, I am single, I live alone, I, I am part of a family, but I, I don't have a media, media family. So I thought I'd just put this in and see what it was like so I could show it to you. So this, this was about 10 or 15 minutes work. So this comes up because I say I'm a family, et cetera, they put up this homepage and I'll show you that in a second. And then I wanted to show more than just the homepage I wanted to show another page. So I said, well, how can I add another page? They said, well, I go here, you can add pages. I said, let me add a contact page. So without any work on this contact page, here's what they gave me. Okay. They gave me a, a form to fill out. And they also tell, they also give the hours that our family is open. By the way, our family is closed on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but anyway, this, this form is here. Okay. Now I did this about six or seven days ago, three days later, I get a message from this website generated from this form asking me, what city in Wisconsin do you live in? And so it's already getting results anyway. So that this is, uh, this is just something I thought was kind of amusing. So anyway, that's, uh, 
And that's all for my examples. Now let me slip back here. Okay. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, there are the, the sites that I showed you that are hosted where you can build it yourself aren't your only options. There are a whole number, and you're probably aware of this, a whole number of websites that are hosted websites that are geared to a specific industry or profession. And I know that, you know, this isn't, you know, when you say build your own website, it could be for your profession or not. But some of the ones I'm familiar with, artists, I, I've done websites for artists. I've done websites for art organizations because I know them well and I know a lot about it. And one of the things, um, the, uh, the appeal to the, these online hosted websites, you can get an artist's website for 20 or $25 a month and you don't have to pay you know, a bunch of money up front. And the number one program is that, that is most popular is Fine Art Studio Online. Another one I found quite interesting, I've looked at and I considered is for a nonprofit and membership organization that's called Wild Africa. And this website would be a good candidate for CCS. It's got all the things you need for a membership organization. You, you log in, you get this thing, they charge by the number of members, et cetera. Uh, but it, it would be the kind of thing a membership organization would use. And I've worked with membership organizations and I've at, at times considered and suggested it, it for them. Now, beyond those two, here are other hosted websites I've seen. They're single use just for one use. I found one for used bookstores. You want to start a used bookstore? There's somebody that has a hosted service just for used bookstores. The one I found most amusing was food tours. Has anybody been on a food tour? Does anybody know what a food tour is? I hate to say I didn't, but I know the guy that built this thing. And apparently people run food tours where they have like uh, Italian lunch. You start at 11.15 someplace for an appetizer, then 11.45 for something for course one, then 12.30 is course two, then one o'clock is dessert, then you go someplace else for a drink and put somebody puts that whole package together for you and they, they charge a fee. And if you wanna have a classy website that promotes that and does the billing and everything, there's, there's a system for it. I did a website for, I'm involved in running and I did a website for the U.S. Chicago Track Club. And uh, along the way, um, these a couple of these sites showed up for track clubs and running clubs. And I was constantly in there seeing what they were like. They were also built for lawyers, churches, you name it, somebody's built it. It's a way to make money. So, okay. Resources. Um, if you hadn't heard of these things, here's some things I would find useful if you're interested in getting into the web and looking at stuff. The first one is the Internet Archive. If you go to um, archive.org, you can put in a domain name and do a search and they'll give you a timeline and they'll tell you, and the Internet Archive goes out to the web periodically and takes a snapshot of a website and stores it. And you can go there and look and see what these pages look like going back. I went into to archive.org and looked at ccs.org and the first entry was 1967. And you know what I found? The website in 1967 looks just like the website you have today. I have another, another interesting use that I found from archive.org. One of my best friends from high school uh, went on to, um, after college, he served in the Air Force. And he came back to our reunions periodically. And he was, he was at the Air Force. He was based here. He was based there. But he never said much about what he had done. He served a year in Vietnam. And then he, he retired. And he came to one of the reunions. And he said, he retired from the Air Force. He's now working in Florida state government. But he never said any more than that. And then he had health problems. I got in touch with him. I talked to him once a month and tried to find out more about him. And then he died. And I wanted to write something about him. And I went looking for information about his background. And on archive.org, I found out that he ran for Congress in Florida. And I found his website for when he was running for Congress. And he had all this history of everything he had done. 
which was shocking. He never told us about it. He received tremendous awards in the military. He was, at one point, he was the vice commander of Andrews Air Force Base, and then he was the commander of Hanscon Air Force Base in Massachusetts. And he received the Legion of Merit, all sorts of things. And he was, he was head of the largest state agency in the state of Florida. So anyway, archive.org is an amazing thing. You can find old stuff. Another one that you may sometimes want to use, you may find a website or a domain name and you want to know who it's registered to, what's it about, who is .com will tell you that. Another useful tool is you'll, I'll find websites and I want to see, gee, how did they do that? What were they using? You can go to builtwith.com, put in that information, put in ccs.org, it'll tell you this built-in front page. And then I've already mentioned Google Trends. And finally down here, the two that I wanna mention, if you wanna uh, build your own website and you wanna work with WordPress, um, it's a more substantial program. A lot of people like you and myself, when you work with something, you like to have a user group or some community where you can collaborate with or get help or talk to them. There are WordPress meetups in Chicago. In fact, there's one in, uh, although it's they're virtual now because we're not meeting in person, but WordPress has a meetup that was, there was one meetup that was on, uh, in, on the north side of Chicago on Irving Park in Sheridan. And there's a second one in the south, south, south part of Chicago at 95th Street at, at the library. And those meetings are virtual. So if you got into WordPress and you want to go, once we get back together in meetings, there's a very good WordPress meetup in Beverly. I give a presentation there. I've been there a number of times. The woman who runs it uh, maintains the website for um, a community college, and she also teaches WordPress. So those are some resources. And, and this is my contact information. So I will um, turn it back over or open up to questions. All right, questions, thoughts, great ideas. We're all overwhelmed. <laughs> I have a question. Um, in looking at these uh, free sites, everything is attached to advertising uh, and marketing uh, that uh, they're connected to. Say that again. When I've looked at these free sites before, like on GoDaddy, uh -huh. they show that whatever they put up has all kinds of links to advertising uh, and uh, marketing. For for GoDaddy, right? For well, for their free free dry, free items, is there any way to make it so you don't have the advertising? Yes. Oh, definitely. Yes. If you. Um... If, if you have your own domain name and you pay a certain fee, the ads are gone. And, okay. and the, Word, the, Word, the WordPress one that's free and you don't want ads, it's $4 a month and your ads are gone. But, but short, short of that, they'll, you know, GoDaddy does it worse than other people. They, you know, and the, Word, the WordPress ones, they don't, they don't advertise WordPress, but they run ads from other companies that they gain revenue from. It's a revenue maker. Uh -huh. Like the guy with these miter boxes, he doesn't really care that they do it. Yes, Steve. Uh, I know that you've been talking about GoDaddy quite a bit. Uh, I'd like to point out a couple of things. Uh, the uh, Apricot site um, is free, but only for up to 50 uh, contacts. And um, another thing to consider um, if the uh, Computer Society here has a, a 501c3 certificate, do they? Are they a nonprofit? Yes. yes. Okay, there's a, another host that it happens to be the one I use. It's called DreamHost, like dreamhost.com. Yes. And they give free, um, inf free sites to nonprofit organizations so that if uh, the Computer Society wants to create a WordPress site and have a domain. They can get the domain for free. You get one domain free and they can set up a WordPress site or any other site. Uh, 
that they want using any other software um, and uh, do that with no charge. It's complete, completely free. Okay, any, any of the board members want to comment on that uh, suggestion? Um, I'll, I'll comment. Uh, um, the the um, recently, um, what, um, I'm involved with the Paul University program uh, that has this um, pro program for seniors where they had two, two, two level week quarters in a row. They've got to build a website for a, a real client. And I offered, when Jerry Sass died, I offered that information to John Ulrey, would you want to consider CCS taking part of that program? And I guess uh, John Ulrey did present that to the board and they decided they want to do that. So I believe there's a program started with the Paul University where they have a team of six or seven students and they go through like uh, 22, 23 weeks to build a website. But, um, and I don't, I don't know at the end of that period, maybe if they would wanna switch uh, their host, their hosting or even go to DreamHost. Note that it's DreamHost, like at night you dream. Yes, yeah. Not, not, I thought you said Dream. It's okay. not, it's DreamHost. R E A M. Yeah, uh, uh, Delta, a Romeo E A M dot com. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that again? Dream host. Okay. Dot com. All right. I've used them quite a while ago. I had a, had a site there. Yeah, I, f I found them to be very helpful. Uh, whenever I have a problem, they have live help coming on and helping me very quickly. I've, I've tried a number of them. I'm, I'm presently working with two name cheap and A2 hosting that I like. I've gotten tired of some of the things that happen at GoDaddy, but so. Other thoughts, comments, questions, complaints? Well, I'll mention, uh, nobody else is talking. I'll tell you, I've created myself a wiki and I use it to store all kinds of information. It's not a beautiful website like the ones you've shown, dear, uh, Joe but it's one that has a great deal of information that I'm able to put in and maintain very easily. Uh, it happens to be, a, a, happens to be a, a made by a Doku wiki and it's a free uh, wiki that I've downloaded and installed on uh, one of my domains, subdomains. You know, Steve, maybe you could demonstrate that at a future meeting. I could. So people could see it. Sure, I could. If that's possible. It yeah. is possible. Okay, cool. I've got a question. Um, I, I missed the first almost hour of the presentation or 45 minutes, but, but if you go and build a website um, somewhere, if it's it's not transferable at all. In other words, if you want to start, if you don't like that place anymore, you want to start a website somewhere else, you basically start from scratch, right? None of it can be saved and transferred. No, and transferred. It, it depends upon what technology you're using to do that. If you use one of the web design tools like Dreamweaver, it's a simple thing to, to copy that to another hosting company. If you use a content management system like WordPress, Drupal, uh, or, or you know, Joomla, you have to do a little bit more work because you have to move a database. And I've done that. I recently moved some, some Drupal sites from GoDaddy to A2 hosting. So you, you can move them around. There's a little bit of work to be done. If you build a website in uh, Wix, or if, if you build a website at a website builder, like that one category of Wix, Squarespace, Weebly, et cetera, where, where that's a single, that's, that, that company, that's all they, they do. If you wanna move that, that's not, that's not easily moved because it's built with software that's unique to Squarespace or Wix or Weebly. Now you, you could, if you have somebody 
you know, who knows a lot about knows a lot about this technology, like myself, where you could export. You know, I, I, so I could go in and export and pull stuff out and import it back into something else. But if if you use one of those website builders, uh, it's not e it's not easy to move that. But it is if you're using a content management system, or you're using web web design software. I designed my own website back in like 1989. I used Publisher, and I uh, had uh, some young engineer actually put it out there for me. You know, I, I ended up with a domain. I think it was with GoDaddy, but I, I shut it down when I quit my consulting back in, uh, you know, 2014. Okay. Other comments, anyone? Well, Joe, we want to thank you very much for a um, very enlightening program. <clears throat> now we're going to shut the recording off and shut the recording off.